Good morning, everyone from Holy Covenant. My strong apologies this morning. I have been having major technical difficulties. And so what I had to do is use my um, Facebook on my phone. Um, this is my first time going live. So again, my extreme apologies. As you see, I am a guest uh, preacher today for Martha, uh, Reverend Martha Daniels. And um, again, um, her and I share two things in common. We have beautiful gray hair. So we're civil queens. So again, <clears throat> I apologize for my late delay in starting the video. And I hope that you can bear with me for the rest of the 45 minutes or so in our worship service. Um, again, thank you so much for your um, opportunity to welcome to the live stream for Holy Covenant MCC virtual worship for Sunday, um, June 14. So good morning, everyone who is with us. I um, So Ma Martha, thank you so much. And um, I hope that the rest of the community can join us this morning as well. Barb and also Joni and Roxanne, um, again, my apologies. So if you haven't already, I invite you to have some um, bread or a roll or a cracker um, as well as something to drink um, and um, with you for service uh, since we will be celebrating communion. Um, I'm going to go straight into announcements. Our book study is on break until Sunday, June the 28th, and we will be finishing our discussion of Inspired on July the 7th. Um, we will, on July the 7th, begin the discussion of the Native Identity, Belonging, and Rediscovering God by Caitlin um, Kurtz. And she reflects on various sorts of identity, a woman, Christian, Native, and how they interact, especially with colonism and the Native genocide, which was often encouraged by Christians. The book is available on Amazon and your favorite local independent bookstore, including Paul's and Anderson's. If you are interested in joining us, please contact Reverend um, Martha Daniels and she will give you the Zoom link. Strive with Pride, mm -hmm. a program of social and education sessions for LGBT seniors created in association with age um, option will offer a great general session via Zoom on Tuesday, June the 23rd. And that would be at 11 a.m. to noon. Now, this information can be accessed um, in the newsletter or contact Reverend um, Daniels. Um, Holy Covenant will be offering a related session on Tuesday, June the 30th at 11 to noon as well. For access to this meeting, contact Reverend Martha Daniels. So, great news as we continue to clean up and repair from the flood, our generosity is needed um, now more than ever. Um, you may give via PayPal access to the link in, in the comments of YouTube. You may give um, also via text to 708-350-6577 and to set up an account. Um, you can also uh, give by electronic check and from your financial institution or by sending a check. Our address is 9145 Grant Avenue in Brookfield, Illinois, 60513. The church mail is checked regularly and Thank you to those who have given. We appreciate your generosity. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Reverend Martha Daniels or one of the board members, which are Roxanne, Barb, Joni, and Sue. Now, Sue is still out of town, um, just as a note. Um, so, she is uh, Reverend Martha Ta Daniels is available by email, phone, 
Facebook Messenger and a text for any pastoral care needs that you might have. I want to also um, inform that the opening prayer is from Sisters of Mercy. Uh, closing prayer is from Reconciliation Works, Lutherans for Full Participation. And the words of institution and invitation are adapted from previous pride services. So remember, the church is more than the building, the service and the, and the space we gather. In a church is each of us together in spirit, if not in person. So we'll center ourselves this morning by lighting up a candle for our worship service. Also, I would like to take a moment to um, a moment of silence for all the individuals who have been in, impacted by the COVID virus and also for the losses that we've had in our Black Lives communities and for all of the lives that have been lost recently. Will you join me in the moment of silence, please? Ashe and Amen. Our opening prayer this morning is Good and generous God, you invite us to recognize and reference your divine image and likeness in our neighbor. Enable us to see the reality of racism and free us to challenge and uproot it from our society, our world, and ourselves. Amen. Today's reading from the scripture is from Psalms 100. And it is called the Psalms of Thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that's made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. God, give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The word of God. Also, I'm using a quote from the wisdom of Gandhi. Quote, May the work of your hands be a sign of gratitude and reverence to the human condition. Quote. Today's message, um, it's called, my message is titled, Make a Noise, Thankful Praise, and Action. So let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, God, my Redeemer, my Rock. Amen. Beloveds, we are living in a time of COVID-19 pandemic. Even as Chicago moves through phase three, cautiously reopening, it doesn't mean that COVID has gone away. But we also have seen the rise of people fighting against the institutional and systematic racism in our country. Each one of us is living in the midst of these intersections in one way or another. Today we have arrived to the second Sunday after Pentecost and the second Sunday in Pride. This month is dedicated to celebrate the love of ourselves and our LGBTQ plus family and the support of the pride movement. It has not always been easy. We have come a long way and we still have a lot of work to do. And, and you must know that you are not alone in this. God, our creator, is always with us. Know that lament may linger for the night, but joy comes 
in the morning. God is our protector, and for that I am thankful. Now, it has been documented that our scripture reading today, Psalms, comes from the book of the Old Testament. It's composed of sacred songs and sacred poems meant to be sung. And there are a total of 150 Hebrew poems, and they have multiple authors, such as David, the son of Kron, uh, Solomon and Moses, and it also has anonymous um, authors, 49 in total, in fact. And the poems are either of lament, and, and, and it's a prayer of pain, of confusion, and of anger. They also draw attention to what's really going on in the world and what's wrong in the world and my apologies and what is what they're asking God to do. And then there's praise, prayer of joy and and celebration and it draws attention to good things that are happening in the world and it recalls the story of God and thanks God and gives thanks to God for he is good. Good morning, Roxanne and Joni. Thank you for joining me. My apologies. So today's reading, um, Psalm 100 does just that. There is so much good news and richness in Psalms, in Psalms 100. Yet, if you will, I would like to highlight thankfulness, praise, and action. Make a noise, thankfulness, and praise. Now, Psalms 100 is named and it's called the Psalms of Thankfulness and Thanksgiving. It calls the whole world to recognize who God is and to worship her. Such as if we're watching God on a stage during a concert, cheering and shouting out her name with joy, God, 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 how many of you know what I mean? When you go to a concert, it's all the rave. You sing songs to honor God. You recognize who God is and how God is always by our side. Always. And you recognize how much God has done for us. May I get an amen? Now, people of faith serve God with contentment for the love of her. Serving not as a task, but out of joy to serve God as her human vessel on earth, if you will, her hand and feet. Praise God in church, in your homes, or in the street when you're making a noise with peaceful chants to end the fight for racial injustice. Shout to God in thankfulness that she is in the front lines that she is with the oppressed and marginalized, and that she loves. She loves us. Now, we can praise and thank God anywhere. And we must continue to be God's servants everywhere. Make a noise of praise. We praise God because God is God. Is who God is. God is our creator. He made us. And so we have been called to know God who made us. Hence, we acclaim God for our being and for our being his, her children. Now, God watches over us even in the midst of pain and struggle. We can rejoice in God's love and we can talk to God through prayer, give thanks and bless God's name. Now, as a faith leader, I recognize God is good and his dead life and love lasts forever and endures forever. I do my best to practice thankfulness and praise her in song and prayer in action. I will be, if you will, God's hands and feet in the ground. And I see God as merciful and God is relational. Now making a joyful noise tells God that you love God and that she is great not just through song or prayer, but also by serving. Let your light shine for the entire world to see that God dwells in you through your lived experiences. 
and your faith in action. Now, how you show up for yourself and others and love thy neighbors and stand with me in the trenches is powerful. Make a noise. Action. While we are called to practice thankfulness and praise God, we are also called to serve God and called to make a noise. Action and mobilization. COVID has shaken the lives of many people in our communities. Employment, businesses, and much more has caused the city to be in a standstill. Meanwhile, as COVID heightens, crisis and despairs hits around the world. Protesting and uprisings are happening through many cities and around the world against police brutality which continues to result in the death of black persons by police officers. If you will, I will digress for a moment to share a brief narrative. On Friday, I was on a call and I was talking with Christine, a wellness counselor. Now, while we were talking about stress, she said to me, because I have been encountering different levels of stress, she said to me, you can only control the controllable. And while we were talking, I had an aha moment. I'm like, yeah, that's right. It's like very much like the serenity prayer. You know, there are actions I can take and there's things that I can control how I practice thankfulness and praise God and how I walk in the world and interact with people. And how I use the mind that God has given me to, to click, uh, critically think and challenge the status quo in a peaceful way. To make a joyful noise that shouts in praise and shouts for change. You know, God has made us all in her image. And we are uniquely having an opportunity to control the controllable. To use the skills that we have from where we are and what has God has given us. You know, God is an advocate on earth. We are God's advocates on earth to breathe her kingdom on earth. We must not continue to stand in the sidelines. And many of us do not. Many of us are very active in so many different ways on the sidelines, in emails, in phone calls, in face and social um, mm -hmm. postings. It's amazing. Good morning, Steve and Jim. Thank you for joining me. Again, my name is Reverend Nilsa Irizari, and I'm here um, hosting for Reverend Martha Daniels. So, as I was mentioning, many of us are continuing to be advocates in God's earth Current events have spoken and systemic racism and white supremacy is real and it plays out in overt, covert and coded ways in our lives. And we have witnessed, even participated in the peaceful protests in the cities, standing up and demanding justice and speaking out against the systemic racism that continues to uphold black women's bodies black men's bodies, black trans women, black trans men's body, Latinx bodies, Native American bodies. They're not valued in society. That is causing violent acts to their persons, to their beings, and it's allowable. And that is the change that needs to occur. According to times.com, a black person is killed by a police officer in America at the rate of more than one every other day. Now, Floyd's death followed those of Brianna Taylor, an emergency medical technician shot at least eight times inside her home by plainclothes police officers executing a non-knock warrant. And Aubrey, Arb killed in confrontation with three white men as he jogged through their neighborhood. Even George Floyd, anguished gasps were familiar to the same words Eric Gardner uttered on Staten Island in the street corner 
in 2014. I can't breathe. And also, Tony McDade, a black trans man, was killed by a police officer in Florida. Two black trans women, Milton in Ohio and Falls in Pennsylvania, were also killed in different acts of violence. Trans women of color, it is quoted by HRC report, particularly black trans women are disproportionately affected by violence and impacted by the intersections of racism, sexism, homophobia, and transphobia, according to the HRC report. Thank you, Barb and Marb, for joining us. Sorry for the technical difficulties. And then something happened this Friday, June the 12th. On the fourth anniversary of the Deadly Pulse nightclub shooting, in which 49 people were killed at a popular LGBTQ venue in Orlando, the Trump administration announced it is eliminating an Obama-era regulation or regulation prohibiting discrimination in health care against patients who are transgender. This injustice is clear. To be denied access to health care because of whom you are. We are in the middle of a COVID-19 pandemic. How could this be happening now or ever? This is heartless behavior. This administration continues to encourage discrimination and hatred that upholds systemic racism and police brutality and violence against Black, Latinx, and Native American bodies. Now, I am mindful that structural change will not happen overnight. Yet I charge that we must listen and learn and we're called to action to serve God as community's hands and feet for change because black lives matter. Dolores Huerta quoted, every moment is an organizing opportunity. Every person a potential activist. Every minute a change a chance to change the world, end quote. Now, we live in the balance of extremes, in the midst of pain. It might seem that the hope is not in the horizon, but do not lose hope because God is forever close to us. He's never far away. You can reach God by prayer, thanksgiving, and praise, and in serving her. God loves us. She tells us so. Every day we are able to wake up, we're able to live another day that God has made us. So let us rejoice in it and be glad in it. But it doesn't mean to be complacent. Each day we live, we have a chance to be God's agents of change. And we are one step closer to eliminating poverty, homelessness, and systemic racism, and much more injustice. So now is the time, dear God. Now is the time to make a joyful noise. A shout from the rooftop that Black Lives Matters. God is good. And her love endures forever. Right here, right now. May I get an amen. That is the closing of my sermon. So much for um, that. May I get an amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, now if we center ourselves... We will do community prayers. Again, thank you everyone for joining us. And if we center ourselves for community prayers this morning, I have turned on a light for all in our community. And as we hold the world in prayer, 
We carry in our hearts the love of families and friends, and so loving God, we offer these prayers. I uplift Barbara this morning. Um, she is with me in heart, and we're sending healing energy to her, please. We uplift Daisy in prayer for any at all healing power for her at this time. Please um, type in or, or, or think of anyone that is in your prayers, um, prayers of the heart. Speak them and know that God hears you. I also ask for prayers for all community members who are experiencing COVID within their families. Dear God, we will hold prayers also for Sherry. We hold her in health and in prayers of healing energy. And for Julie, we pray as well for Julie and we keep her in prayer. May God be merciful and watch over all our Holy Covenant community and members and families. So we gather up in these prayers and offer them to God as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And before I end my prayers, I would also like to pray for Crystal's health and prayers for Marianne. May God be with each one of us each and every day. Amen. Now this morning for communion, we celebrate the communion in MCC and it's not restricted to any ordinary, just any ordinary clergy. Um, but we may be a uh, delegate to someone who performs um, or the pastor designates. Today we are all stewards of God's gift of um, the bread and the wine, and we are going to be consecrating together in the wonders of technology. As you see, bear with me with this process. This is my first, for those who were not with me earlier, this was my, is my first um, Facebook Live ever. So, on the night in which God, uh, he was betrayed, Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given to you. Do this in memories of me. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, my love poured out for all nations. Do this in the remembrance of of me. So let's partake in communion. Join me in prayers of thanksgiving. God, you are present in all times and in all places. Bless this time that we have shared. May it be strengthening us to live in the ways that are closer to your God and your calling and in our lives. In all the names, amen. I would like to take the time to remember that more, that the church is more than a building and the space that we gather in, the church is for each one of us, together in spirit and not in person. I would like to take the opportunities to repeat the opening 
announcements for those that were not able to join us uh, sooner. Um, so our book study is on break until Sunday, June the 28th. We will be finishing our discussion of Inspired. And then on July the 7th, we will begin discussion of Native Identity, Belonging, and Rediscovering God by Kaylin Kurtz. And it's a reflection on various sorts of identity of women or woman, uh, Christian, Native, and how they in interact, especially with colonialism and the Native genocide, which was often encouraged by Christians. The book is available on Amazon and your local favored independent bookstore, including Powell's and Anderson's. If you're interested in joining us, please contact Reverend Martha Daniels and she will give you the Zoom link. Also, Strive with Pride, a program of social education and sessions for LGBT seniors um, creating an association with age options will offer a general session via Zoom on Tuesday, June the 23rd at 11 um, a.m. to noon. Also, uh, the information is in the uh, newsletter as well or contact Reverend Martha. Um, Holy Covenant will be offering... Oh, let me see. It's Okay, should be... Colin says you should be an ASMR artist. LOL, he enjoyed that. Oh, thank you. Colin, I love you. Thank you so much. Oh, excuse me. Let me continue back the announcements. And so um, for accessing these meetings, please contact Reverend Martha. As we continue to clean up and repair from the floods, your generosity is needed um, now more than ever. You may give to via vape. Uh, PayPal, access it through the links in the comments on YouTube or on our website. Um, also, uh, think uh, uh, text GIVE to 708-350-6577 to set up an account. And also, electric uh, check, electronic checks are always welcome. Um, and um, the address is 9145 Grant Avenue in Brookfield, Illinois, 60513. And the church email is checked regularly. Thank you for those who have given, and we appreciate your generosity. Also, Reverend um, Martha Daniels, she is available by email, phone, Facebook, Messenger, and uh, uh, by text for any pastoral care or services that you might need. So, um, I would like to uh, take this moment to close in prayer. Uh, and the prayer is, Creator God, we marvel in awe of the expandedness of your creation. Your margins of diversity are boundless. And for that, we thank you. Each of our beloved LGBTQIA plus community, brown and black siblings, are beautifully and wonderfully made in your image. And teach us to love people just as they are and embrace their identity fully as you have embraced us. I hear your mercy and I hear your prayers. Amen. So as we close again, my name is Reverend Nilsa Irizari and I would like to share this last um, uh, thought. Please, COVID-19 uh, pandemic is not over. Um, we have many things that are going on simultaneously, but please continue to practice social distancing. We are on the reopening phase of Chicago right now, and we're, we're, uh, we're opening very cautiously. Um, go out as you're able when you need to go to different locations, but try to stay social distancing, do preventive measures as much as possible as putting your mask and also washing your hands. Wash, 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 wash. Um, and so know that you are loved and God is with you. Um, and again, thank you this morning for joining us and my strong apologies for the late technical difficulties. May you all be blessed and know that you are loved and God is powerful. And we thank God in all that we do. We ask for all of these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great, great, wonderful Sunday.